reading from verse 13 to 15. But this is a word that is timely in time of need and trouble. Our theme this morning will be entitled, uh, it, it is time to recover. But let us read a portion of Abaka's reading in Abaka tree, reading from verse three, verse 17 to, to its end. Though the fig tree shall not blossom, neither the fruit shall heed in the vine. The labor of the olive shall faint, and the field shall heal no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the stall, and the herd from the stall. Yea, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the Lord of my salvation. Strength, the Lord is my strength, and he maketh my feet as hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon my high places as the chief priest and with string instrument. That's the portion of God's word. So though the situations of our lives may seem numerable and uncircum um, uncircumspect, unable to fathom or we can't think about it, guess what? We will tell trust in the Lord. Momentarily we'll be with you, but find that portion of reading and we will get in the word of God and in the presence of God. <laughs> Yeah, it's that short. Yeah. 
Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of them. Yeah. 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 Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Come on. He's alive. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that. We're going to get up, get up. Come on, somebody. You can have a Holy Ghost party today. Come on. We have victory. He picked me up. On solid ground. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. They changed my life. On solid ground. Yes, 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 yes. I thank God, 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 I thank God. Is someone grateful this morning for an awesome God? A merciful God. His truth endureth to all generation. Abaka told us this morning, though the fig tree shall not blossom, the flavor of the olive shall fail. The earth shall be cut off from the soul. But guess what? We will rejoice in the God of our salvation, the God that is our strength. So as you find a portion of the text that we will be reading in today, it's taken from Second First Chronicles 13 through 15, but we're not going to read in its entirety. For those who are scholars and know the story quite well, after uh, the Ark of the Covenant was taken, here comes God, uh, here David noted one thing, he noted one thing. He saw the blessings in Abaka's house, in Abaka's life, and so forth. He decided by that means that he's going to take back the Ark of the Covenant. So this morning we draw our text uh, from as we stated, First Chronicles 13 through 15. But let's read a portion of God's word in verse 9 through the end of 15. And when you read the word, it says here the word. And they came out to the threshing floors of Kendor, Uzri, Uriah, and reached it out and stretched out for the ark because uh, uh, it was often the oxen was about to stumble. And the Lord angered burn against him and struck him. It talks about he was ready to cut the Ark of the Covenant. And David was angry because the wrath of that the wrath has broken out against him. And in this day the place was called Persia because of Yuza. And David was afraid, and God of God in the day and asked, how oh, can I ever bring the ark of God to me? And he did not take the ark with him. So David was fearful because of what had happened. So we're going to pray and ask God's blessing on the word. Father, we thank you for the word that has been brought to share this morning. We ask that it will be, Lord, edifying to your people, that your people will experience you like never before. You, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that your will will be done. Let your word go forth with clarity and with power. So we see David had a fear. So we're asking God this morning as our text will draw us to our message as it is time to recover. What are we talking about recovery? And what are we talking about the Ark of the Covenant? We see where they were transporting the Ark of the Covenant uh, and because God said you ought not to touch which signifies the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God uh, in the biblical text. So because you cannot touch that which God already has in anointing, the, the ark will not fall. But he sought to cut it out of safeguarding, out of protecting the ark of the covenant. David was afraid, as the text says, to take it into the city. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed-Edom, the, 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 the Gladiates. The Ark of the Covenant remained with the family of Obedidom in his house for three months, and the Lord blessed his house ever. 
everything that he had the lord blessed so the presence of the lord when he comes to dwell with the believer as we did with pentecostal a pentecost sunday when the presence of god comes to stay with you there is blessings that will follow you so we see where the presence of God bless Obedidon's house. So I'm saying to you out there by very various means, it is time to recover. It is time to recover that which God has entrusted in your care. It is time to recover that which God has laid in your life or called you to do. It is time to recover. Recovery can be a very large word as we talk about recover. Recover stated or recoveries will state that there was something in existence, uh, something that was owned before. Uh, it was pre-existing. Uh, you was healthy, but you are sick, so you need to recover from a surgery. You need to recover from an illness. We see also in the book of Second Samuel 6, it still speaks about the text. The Ark of the Covenant was taken 596 to 586 BC before the common era from the Babylon Empire to conquer Israel. And the Ark at the time supposedly stored in the Temple of Jerusalem for those who noted the text that the Temple was destroyed. The vanish up from history, whether it was destroyed to the capture or it was hidden, no one knows where the Ark of the Covenant was. But here comes David taking the Ark of the Covenant. He comes because he acknowledged it is the presence of God. Can I say that we have to know when the presence of God is here? We got to know when the anointing of God is on someone's life that is called for service. You are not fighting in opposition an individual, but you are fighting the anointing that's on the life of someone. And can I tell those of you who have read the scriptures time of Saul demise that David oftentimes tried to go after in pursuit of Saul. We read, if you read the text, even to the latter part of chapter 24 of 1 Samuel, you will note it that even when Saul thrust the sword upon his side and ready to die, here comes a man from another land. He said, behold, I saw David thrust the sword and the spear in his side and I finished the job for him, but noted what David said, touch not the Lord's anointing, nor do his servant any harm. You are not in the predicament or, or you're not in the state to take life or to lay hands upon God's anointed. So we look that the Ark of the Covenant was taken. The Ark of the Covenant was brought from Jerusalem. David also gathered all the able-bodied men of many thousand when he went down to Baal to go and get the Ark of the Covenant. In first uh, Samuel's verse six uh, and verse eleven says, and the king David told uh, that the how he was told that the blessings of the house of Obedidium because of the ark of the covenant. Uh, can I tell you, it is time to recover. No matter where you are in your life today, uh, it may be a global pandemic, it may be a crisis, uh, it may be a divorce, it may be a, a court situation. You might find yourself. Uh, even sick unto death, but it is time this morning. Uh, it is time to recover. Can I say, though the fig tree shall bl blossom, uh, your future and your expectation may seem obscure, uh, but I'm here to tell you that God says you got to go get your stuff. Uh, you got to bring back the presence of God. So David heard that Obedidim's house was blessed. So David brought up the heart of the Lord from the house of Obedidom and rejoiced. When they heard, they cried that the ark of the Lord had taken six steps. He sacrificed a bullock and a fatted calf. So David rejoiced when the ark of the Lord had returned. Can some of you tell or testify of gaining victory? It is time to recover. 
Though the canker worm and the locust, Joel declare, have been taken, and the canker worm, everything that have been taught, taken from you, everything the enemy had taken. Can I say this six month going in the rest of 2022 that you're there to recover? You're in the recovery business. You're going for your sons and your daughters. You are going to possess some things. Can I say to some? Someone that is halting between an opin opinion about jobs, uh, halting between an opinion about uh, scholastic achievement and college and university, uh, those that are looking at the setback of the economy of this world. Uh, can I say under God that God called me to tell you this morning, uh, it is time to recover. So you look at uh, David when he saw that Obedidom's house was blessed. And know that he had the heart, the presence of God. He once could attest to the blessings of God. Uh, how many have walked out from the blessings uh, of God and the covenant of God. Uh, and when they see the manifestation of the blessings in your life. Uh, can I say this? There are some that will come up against you. Uh, there will those will rise up against you. But David said my heart will not fear. Uh, I will be confident in this very thing. Uh, that he that begin a work in me will be able to perform it to the day of Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, as long as you give that which he committed to him. So it takes commitment in a time like this. Uh, we see spouse don't know about commitment. Uh, spouse don't know about the two core, the power of agreement. Uh, but I here to tell you under God, it is time uh, to recover. So how long did the Ark of the Covenant was away from the children of Israel? I'm just giving you a background of what we are talking about recovery. Israel carried the Ark of the Covenant during 40 years. They spent wandering in the desert after their emancipation, after they were brought out of Egypt. Can I say to some of us or some of you, stop staring and wandering in the desert. God promised you the mountain. He promised you Canaan. Why you are walking or halting between two decisions? So they stay 40 years trying to figure it out. So you spend some time trying to find out uh, how to regroup your thoughts, uh, how to retool your instrument, uh, how to preposition yourself. Uh. So after 40 years spent in the wilderness, after the conquering of Canaan, because Canaan is the promise, he brought them to Shiloh. The King David also took the Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem uh, where his sons and his ancestors Sa Sa Solomon even instead in the temple. So he did not even got to, to build the temple or the new temple after the former temple was destroyed. Uh, but can I tell you somebody, uh, it is time to recover. Stop staying in the mood uh, of where you look back of where you have lost uh, because there is too many miles behind you. Uh, too many fears and too many doubts. Uh, your feet have gone through too many trials, temptation, testing, pestilence. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, you get yourself in a recovery mode. Uh, get yourself like David uh, gathered uh, the thousands men uh, because he went out to do business. Uh, can I say to those who are prayer warriors, intercessors, and leaders, uh, it is time we read group and retool uh, because we are going back for what the enemy took from us. Uh, we are going back for our sons and our daughters. Uh, we are going back for our nation and the society at all. Uh, the kingdom of God suffered violence. Uh, but I heard the violence get passive, aggressive and take it back force. Uh, some things you can sit by while the enemy reap a buck. So in the recovery process, David said, I got to get some man. I got to go. Because if I go by myself, they may think uh, that they can override me or overrule. Uh, but when I go in the power of God, uh, when I go with the army of God, greater things can be done. The Bible said, one shall chase a thousand, but two and put ten thousand to flight. 
So the power of agreement is necessary in going for your stuff. So 40 years they wondered. How long have you been halting or you're considering and recontemplating a decision, a move? I'm saying to you, it is time to recover. Don't delay, it is time to recover. Look at the text in Matthew 10 verse 24. Jesus looked at them and says, with men it is impossible but with god all things are possible many times in recovery the goal of long term so sorting out what you are doing seems out to reach the impossible to achieve so even your goals your long-term goals seems like it is unattainable the verse reminds us that God will help us to recover the even, the impossible. So the things that you are contemplating today, God through the Holy Spirit will have me to tell you it is time. Don't look at the shift around you. Don't become combattered or troubled about the social economic system. Don't be alarmed of what's going on. Someone asked the question before Russia and the Ukraine went to war, saying if it is the end of time or the world will come to an end. Let I know that all blood washed believers that call on the name of Jesus Christ should not be fearful of the end time because the Bible said there will be rumors of war, there will be noise and pestilence, there will be earthquake in diverse places. When we see these things, look up for redemption, draw Naya. Can I say we're talking about perilous times shall come. Perilous times are here for the believer who trusts in God. We ought to know that we are living in the last of the last days and we are on the last lap to make it in. How many times we have turned around and every time we heard about it, God is calling his people home. Some things are happening in the nation and in the global world, in the United Nation, in the United Health Organization. Some have different conspiracy theory about COVID-19. Some have other things theories about humanization uh, and they talk about tracking and tracing. Uh, many have these different theory, the theologies uh, or theories. Uh, now we heard that they want to rewrite the Bible. Uh, they know constitution or civil liberty as Christians uh, especially here in the United States have been challenged uh, where we cannot speak. Uh, we are going to see we are living in end time Babylon. So you're worried about everything and you're not worried about your eternal hope. You're worried about the external, but you're not worried about the internal. As I said oftentimes, people believe in witchcraft and voodoo and black magic and seance, and they believe in the grace of Almighty God. People believe in evil than good. The Bible said in the last days, men shall become lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure and love. They all love is themselves. So if you meet someone without an hidden agenda, whether marriage or not married, a wife may seek more money. And we saw the Johnny Depp series, whether inaccuracy or not. We see many celebrities as they go to court. And oftentimes it will talk about financial gain. It will be seen in our day-to-day -day life when people try to protect their image than serving God. Well, somebody may not understand where I'm going with the time of recovery. Can I note it after two years in battle before the court in New Jersey? I can tell you over 52 times I count the record dismissal or some suspension. I count over four dockets already reading FDMD and DF. And it is in the archive of record. This past ain't coming to you with no story. When someone wants to destroy you, they make all the attempts and the lies and the tricks. But can I say there comes a time of recovery? In all the deliberation, the court might stipulate different things. 
The court might send you to mediation. The court might say resolve it among yourself. Uh, but can I tell you when it's time to go back for what God gives you, uh, you got to get passive aggressive. Uh, and on all the times that on the time of a representation as self, uh, play a plaintiff representing myself, can I tell you it is a win-win situation. The enemy can't do anything. He only can sidetrack you. He only can bombard you. But no, the things which are impossible with men are made possible with God. You're going for your stuff. Pastor, what are you talking about? Uh, it is time to recover. Can I tell you in the time that we are living in, uh, if you do not pay for your home, your mortgage, your car payment, uh, there is something called procurement and recovery. Uh, the bank will put a lien on your house. Uh, the, they will recover your car. They will take your car, whether you park a, your job. Uh, they will impound it. Uh, the bank will hold on because they have the lien and the title. Uh, can I say something to someone out there. Uh, if you give your title to God, it's all right. Uh, the bank can still sell your car and even take you to court for breach of contract. Uh, but can I tell you, it is the same thing in the spiritual realm. Uh, when you give it to God, God got your title. Uh, he got your back of ground. He got your story. He got your history. He knows where he takes you from. Uh, can I say to somebody, don't look back at your past. Uh, the lean holders ain't got nothing on you. Uh, the namesayers ain't got nothing on you. Uh, can I tell you your title is paid in full? Uh, can I tell those who are all in between two opinions uh, that Jesus paid it all? Uh, all to him you owe. Uh, in third John it says if your heart doth condemn you, God is greater than your heart. Uh, you don't have to live in condemnation of others. Uh, but to live by the grace and of the mercies of Almighty God. So to get your frame of mind in recovery, there are some things we got to understand what recovery is or to recover something. It is to return something to a normal state of health, of mind, of strength, to recover stock, to recover your home, to recover your possession, to find, to regain. The police recover a stolen vehicle. There is something to recover in your life. Whether you are health, you got to go back to the days when you were good and in able bodied uh, can i say to you uh, when we talk about to recover it's time to recover there are words that we may look that will implore on recovery words that are associated with the word recovery it is the action of recovery the process to restore our rest restitution or reconciliation it is the power to bring back that which was taken so joel 2 Verse 23 to 36 says, Glad then when ye children of Zion, the Lord your God, he had given you the former reign, the mother's reign, so when things seems like it ain't happening according to Joel, he will cause you to come down from the rain from heaven and the former rain and the latter rain for the first month. Can I say this to someone? It may seem like there is no rain. A baka told us, though the fig tree shall not blossom, the labor of the olive shall faint and they shall be cut off from the stall. He's saying despite isolation, desolation, he's declaring like Paul declared in Romans 12, oh, none of these things, what shall or who shall separate me from the love of God? Shall your wife, your husband knife? Shall pestilence, shall disaster, shall even death, shall even peril by the sword, shall the loss of job, what or who shall separate you from the love of God. So Joel is telling us not even the former things. Because in all the state Paul declared in Hebrew 4, whatever state I find myself, I've learned to be contented. 
Here, Joel trying to bring our mind at a state uh, to understand that the God uh, that brings us rain, uh, the God that will feed us according to Matthew 6, uh, 25. Consider not what he shall eat nor drink, uh, for your heavenly Father know that you're in need of these. So Joel lamented these words. Uh, the fruit, the floors uh, shall be full of wheat. That means plenty. The fat shall be overflowing in the wine and the oil. I will restore you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, and my great army will I send among you. Can I tell somebody it is time to be restored. It is time for recovery. Joel said God will restore what the palmer worm has taken. For those who are in a marriage or in a union, you know your other parties or your other partner, if your divorce have taken years from you, you know stuff have been taken. But I'm here to tell you under God, God promised to restore it. Let that man and that woman walk off or walk out. But can I tell you the restoration time is now. Can I tell you, Joel said, though the fig tree shall not blossom, Joel is making rehydration according to Abaka. He said the palmer worm the years they have devoured and taken. God of plenty and grace is able to restore it. Jeremiah 13, 17. I will restore you. I will restore your health. Psalms 51, 12 tells us, restore me the joy of my salvation. God is going to restore your joy that you can smile again, you can live again, you can dance again, you can stand in the abundance of God. So we are not going to be perturbed or troubled. The promise of restoration I will restore your health uh, and heal your wounds, said God, uh, according to Jeremiah 13, 17. Declare the Lord. The international reading, it repeats the theme throughout the Bible. We offer hope when everything else seems a country, a contrary to it. So what you're looking at, the situation of your life uh, seems persistent and it seems like there is no hope. Uh, but can I tell someone out there, uh, God will recover you from sickness, uh, whether a surgery, a broken marriage, a divorce, a financial setback. Uh, can I say to someone the years that the palmer worm, uh, the locust and the caterpillar has taken, uh, eaten away through time, uh, weaken your resources, take from your health. Uh, can I tell you it is time for restoration. Uh, it is time to restore restitution. Uh, we talk about the power of Pentecost. Uh, so when God comes and he endued us with power, no, it is not just power to speak in tongues, uh, but it's power to get aggressive. Uh, it's power to walk in the unknown. Uh, it is power to go back for your stuff. Uh, he is not there to anoint you to sit down. Uh, when the presence of God comes upon the believer, it is to empower you. Noted every time they went to battle in text, they pray, they sought the power of God. Because they need the power of the Most High to go with us. Uh, we cannot do some things of our own self and our nature because uh, at times we intended to fail. Our objection may be obscure. We can't see because we are looking through our eyes. But when we depend on the power of the Holy Ghost, we know he will bring us and lead us into truth. We know he will give us, Lord, the ingenuity, the capability, the know-all, and the withhold to do the recovery process. Noted as I stay with the legal framework of the court two years I'm not ashamed to share of my testimony. 
But after 47 times, after three times, this is what the Holy Spirit gives. Uh, he gives an insight when he gave me the scripture from 2 Chronicles 20, uh, reading from 1 to 11, to ask if I didn't need not to war in this matter. He says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord your God. Uh, can I tell you over those period of time of 47, uh, standing or representing myself as a self-petitioner, can I said I look a, a, a letter counselor for 20 years practicing law look back by a new beginning baby in the legal school system for state school legislation or state or laws or school of law to university in the state of New Jersey Keen and Rutgers are the, the, the Keen Rutgers and then they are the state ones or state holders in the teaching or the practicing of the law in the state noted that the counselor who represented the, the defendant did not and could not equivocate or match up to the power of the Holy Ghost. So every time there is a deliberation and I am the petitioner. I talk to you about entering the courtroom of heaven. The verdict always goes in my favor because truth was standing in a line with the word of God. Can I say for God to work for you, uh, you got to work the word and let the word work for you. Uh, you got to stand in truth. Uh, can I say when the devil throws something, you throw something back at the enemy. Uh, use the word of God, which is a shield and a sword. So out of my dilemma comes here. God spoke after one month. In for meeting, the Holy Spirit gave me to search, uh, and He gave me a name, and I gave me a business plan, an idea, and an identity. Uh, so He did not let the enemy throw me to the crossroad. Uh, but here comes destiny, creation, even planning, business, and interior design. Not only the Holy Spirit did not leave me there, but he said it is time now to start. It is time to get about my master's business. Uh, then here comes God anointing me. Uh, and when he's dealing with me, here comes Remnant Redeemer International Ministry. Uh, I'm saying to someone, there is too much in you uh, to stay there wondering and pondering. Uh, don't look about what you have lost. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, go back for what God gives. Uh, I said if God gives you it and you are settled, go back for that which God gives. Uh, David, understand the presence of God. Uh, understand it that when we are going to recover, we got to have a mindset. Uh, can I say we got to have a mind to go to get what God gives us? So when we talk about renewing of your mind, Romans 12, 2 says, uh, these meaning of this text are for the living, the best of life. Uh, when you shift the pattern and the focus, you can change your life. Uh, so things may alter your decision and your framework, but you're called to make life-changing decisions. So Romans 12 tells us these things, uh, that the verse is also renewing your mind, uh, changing the way you think uh, to create a better life for yourself and a life that will honor God. So when the enemy rise up for the past two years, I did not sit there in pity party, can I tell you? I don't go to pity party, but I go to prayer meeting. Can I say when the devil raised up the arms of the altar, there was a hundred intercessors every time the enemy attack, I attack to the, the, the strategies of prayer. Can I tell you when the enemy comes upon you like a flood, God will lift up a standard. God will confuse and scatter your enemies. So the devil could not win because I did not come within me, myself. But I come in the representation of the kingdom of God. I come with the anointing that is upon me. And I come with the favor of God. Can I say to someone when the enemy comes with setback. Look at every setback as a coming back. And the devil don't know I might be coming. God could lay on me three best selling books. During the height of a pandemic. So did not the Lord take and the Lord give it. You cannot Stay in a mindset uh, 
that you are doom and you are failure, woe is me. You got to get the Romans 12 to experience of reposition yourself. So what God says about your mind according to Romans 12 to, to change your mind is the central theme that Jesus Christ ceremony was in Matthew 4, 17. Jesus challenged people to change their thinking because regardless of how many times you have read the Bible, it is your mind doesn't change. You will simply impose the basis, the label of what people tell you are words that you read will have no effect. Can I say that to someone? You can read the plan, but you don't follow through. Come on, somebody, you can read the word, but you don't get up and go. Can I say to you, your mind is needed in the recovery process? What can you say to be reformed by the renewing? So if you have a mindset, your mind has to be changed, renewed. Romans 12 tells us to not be conformed to the world, but also be transformed by the renewing. So if your mind was somewhat somewhere else, you ask, the, ask God to renew your mind for the recovery. Renew your, your strength. Renew your joy. Renew your hope. Give you renewness that you may think of the way that he wants you to think. So the mind, it improves goodness, good health acceptable whatever is acceptable and the perfect will of God that is renewing your mind your mind can be completely transformed you can overcome the fears and the misgiving that others give to you you can walk in total faith so it's time to recover it is time not only to recover but it's also a time to have a, a renewed spirit before God can I say to those that are feeling down if you are not the victim but the victor you may not be the victim but you are the aggressor can I say God is calling to a spirit of renewal this term for Christians sometimes often used to describe what happened when Jesus Christ put Hold out his spirit upon all flesh. Can we talk about Pentecost? Can I say when God come to endure us, it is to renew our spirit. He is will freely work the power through us and his people. He will show the world how real and mighty and how good he is in our lives. So it is time to recover. You're sitting there and wondering, how can I recover? Pastor, it seems impossible. It seems hopeless. Can I say to you, with God, all things are possible. Jesus Christ told his disciple in the book of Mark 10, he said, with God, all things are possible. Can I tell you, it only seems impossible for you, but it is possible with God. So Jesus Christ said, if you believe that all things are possible, then believe. It only requires your faith in Mark 9.23. The time that will change our mindset and renew us to the way we think. If you can renew your mind and thought towards the things of God, it can change the world. So you have to not only have a concept of what you're going to when you're praying to God. You've got to say to yourself, God, is this right? Is this true? And this is often times I do not understand Christians of many faiths. Uh, they have a form of godliness of how it but dear to deny. They go to the rituals of church, but when the word of God to be lived and demonstrate and practice, it is opposition. They make other excuses. They don't come to the full knowledge of the word of God and say, I'm a sinner. Not saying that I messed up and I'm coming short of the glory of God. Can I say this to you out there? Don't think that you are right in all you're doing. So, Pastor, are you saying you're perfect? No, I'm far from being perfect. But I serve a perfect God. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying we can go to God to be renewed. We can get in the time of whatever the enemy take out of our lives and time we're going to recover it. We are not merely called to exist, but we're called to live in God. 
For those of you who do not understand to live purposeful life, you got to find out the reason why you are here. You are not here to take void and space, but you are here to fulfill. You are here to do what God called us. He did not call us to sit by. Neither have he called the believers, those who have family and loved one. Note it, God did not make you or call you to be a Christian so you can sit idle by. It's for you to evangelize your house and your household. So you don't have to sit down and wonder and ponder. Today, those who have not the knowledge of Jesus Christ, you know of him, but you like to know him for yourself. We can give you that opportunity to invite you to Jesus. You can RSVP your response. And when you started the journey, kindly know that you have to transfer the title from the lien holder to price is paid in full. Jesus Christ knows everything about us. He knows about our desire and our heart desires. He knows about our faults and our weaknesses. I urge you to invite him in your life. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your people and the word that have gone forth today. We ask that, Lord God, it is time to recover everything that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar has taken, devoured, stole. Father, we ask that, Lord God, you meet your people where we need. Give us a mindset to recover. Give us a mind, Lord God, to seek you first in your kingdom. Let your kingdom purpose be understood in our lives. Father God, whatever we do as believers, whatever we do in our society and our nation, God, let us look to the hill from whence come to our hill. Father, we know, God, there is hopelessness in this world. And Paul, let us know if we hope in this world, we'll be men most miserable. But we thank you that we can find hope in you. We have an assurance, oh God, and we thank you, God, that you bring us to a point that you can restore our soul. You can restore and renew us. You can revive us uh, because, God, you have called us and anointed and appoint this time and this season, even in this space. We thank you again, God, for your word. Let your word go forth with clarity and with power as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. We thank you for sharing with us today. Please do share, like, subscribe, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook Live. Remember to join us with the Redeemer's Voice Heard in Kingdom Purpose Radio. We are here to serve you, and in serving you, we are serving God. Knowing that we are in a changing world, but we serve an unchangeable God. God be with you until next time. Tune in for our Bible study Wednesday night, as we'll still continue in prayer. <laughs> You are the